Hello, everybody. Okay, let's make the mudra for the mandala offering, please. Here is the great earth filled with the smell of incense and covered with a blanket of flowers. The great mountain, the four continents, wearing the jewel of the sun and the moon. In my mind, I make them the paradise of the Buddha and offer it all to you. By this deed, may every living being experience the pure world. Idam Guru Ratna Andalakam Nariyatayame. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, and the song of the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create, from the practice of giving with the understanding of emptiness, moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, patience with the understanding of emptiness, joy is separate with the understanding of emptiness, concentration and wisdom, may I attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, and strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, and the song of the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create, from the practice of, giving with the understanding of emptiness, moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, patience with the understanding of emptiness, joyous effort with the understanding of emptiness, concentration, wisdom, May I attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. I go for refuge until I am enlightened to the Buddha, compassion, knowledge, and strength, the Dharma, the enlightened side of truth, and the song of the community of realized beings. From the virtuous merit I create, from the practice of giving with the understanding of emptiness, moral discipline with the understanding of emptiness, patience with the understanding of emptiness, joyous effort with the understanding of emptiness, concentration and wisdom, I will attain the state of a Buddha for the benefit of all living beings. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's start from my upper left. That would be Lydia. What do you have to rejoice about today? Uh, good morning. Good evening, everyone. Uh... I would like to rejoice uh, that I have uh, tickets to Japan and uh, I booked a hotel <laughs> in Japan in uh, Kyoto and uh, hopefully I will see Gesh Michael Roach in December. <laughs> and it's my rejoice that it's my karma and I understand that my good deeds uh, forced me to see that. Excellent. Wow. Wow. Well, good luck and have a great trip. That's that's outstanding. <clears throat> okay. Well, that's going to be hard. And who can top that for rejoicing? Svetlana, what do you have to rejoice in? <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, today, maybe I could rejoice about uh, three spheres, uh, as there was some ripening with my uh, uh, owner of my uh, accommodation apartments and uh, she decided to collect money from me from the beginning of this year in some uh, paragraph of cost which we not discuss that I will pay for and uh, uh, like uh, ordinary solution was like to search new apartments and uh, solve this issue in ordinary ways but then I decided that uh, changing apartments will not change my seats, obviously. So uh, I should concentrate more on working on my seats and that I uh, uh, made uh, this owner of this apartment uh, to behave in this way. So uh, 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 keeping in mind ordinary solutions, I'm trying uh, to be... Uh, more uh, friendly with other people and not uh, to uh, do uh, something without discussions and demand from people more than we uh, agreed about. Wow, well, that's that's very interesting you mentioned that because that's exactly the, the typical solution is if I don't like my job, I'll quit and get another job. Well, 
what are the chances are that that's going to be a nice job and you won't quit that. I have a student in South Africa who swore when they, she moved to the Netherlands that it was a new, wonderful job. And now a year later, it isn't so wonderful, but she's moved to the Netherlands. So if you work with the three spheres and karma ripening, that's going to make life much simpler down the road. Okay, Daria, what do you have to rejoice in? I rejoice. I uh, Today, I saw a lot of people who help each other, and uh, I rejoice. Um, I'm to see my uh, seat is grow up because I ill, <laughs> and my back is uh, hurt. It's but it's okay, and I am very happy. And uh, when I feel uh, hurt, I I think okay, I take all 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 um, suffering uh, in this world, and uh, I could feel this, and I happy. Oh. Well, it's interesting when we take upon the suffering of the world. Yeah, it turns out to be our back hurts. That's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple to handle. But yeah, it is. I mean, the bottom line is it's all our karma ripening. All this trouble with Ukraine, all this trouble with the weather, um, all the trouble in Israel. It's all coming from our own karma. So I wish I could figure out a way to, a big way to take care of it. But it's a little stuff, as I've said more than once, it's all the little things we do that catch up with us. So think of all the little things you do that disturb or annoy or ignore people and stop doing those and dedicate that to a better world. It's a slow process, but I find it gives me hope. And that's, I mean, that's the bottom line for any human is to have hope. So, okay, Katharina, what do you have to rejoice in? Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Klaus, so uh, Svetlana, can you help me? Yes. Um, yeah, Rado is... Uh, I'm rejoicing that... Uh, I'm remembering about, uh, I'm remembering during the day what you are talking about, that doing some small things, uh, I'm trying to think that I'm creating paradise for myself and others, uh, somewhere to help children uh, to figure out their classes or some uh, home tasks, uh, helping my husband. And also I'm rejoicing that I'm trying to remember about what Geshe was talking about, that when there is some problem, you need to uh, switch it around uh, to opportunities. My analysis, medicine analysis were not so good and I was afraid a little bit, but then it became an opportunity that uh, I was directed uh, to all monitoring, all uh, researches and uh, take care about my health uh, uh, so that I can have health body and help others uh, to study and practice. And by the way, uh, I have uh, not bad results for now and I'm rejoicing about it. Thank you. Very good, very good. <clears throat> I find it, <clears throat> I haven't gone, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I haven't gotten depressed about my Parkinson's because as I've said many times before, it's it's my karma, it's nobody else's. So be, to be depressed about me is silly. So I have hope. I know every morning when I wake up, actually this morning I woke up having slept through an alarm and I thought, oh my God, I slept through class, but it was only seven in the morning. So I had several hours to get ready for class. But hope, hope and knowledge, it's, it's your fault, it's your responsibility. <clears throat> and because of that, you can make the changes. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
necessary to have the life you want. So yay. Okay, who's next? Nellie, you're up. Dear Lama Somati, dear everyone, uh, good uh, day. Uh, today I would like to tell you a story which happened with me at 7 in the morning. It happened that from this day we decided to start to, uh, to, uh, practice together Southern of Waitara and I turned on uh, my laptop uh, and was waiting but chat was not uh, turned on and i uh, was thinking that my seeds ripening that um, uh, i did something in the past i did something uh, in the past and did some divisive actions and deeds and the speech talks uh, i was rejoicing and i was thinking that about opportunity that it is opportunity for me to think about myself and uh, uh, tomorrow I will uh, hope that uh, it, it will happen. Good, good. Well, it's, <clears throat> it's, I don't like to use the term, it's my fault. <clears throat> <clears throat> I like to use the term, it's my responsibility. Because my fault is negative, but my responsibility to me is a positive thing. And because of that, I can make the changes I need. So, very good. Katya, what do you have to rejoice about today? Hi, hello, everybody. I rejoice that um, here in API Mexico, we are going to start a project that is the Dharma for Kids. And we are very, I'm very excited. Uh, happy that I be part of this project and we are working on that. We are going to start on October, at middle of October and let's see what happens. So I'm sorry, what's the project again? Dharma for Peace. Dharma for Peace? Peace, children. Oh, Dharma for children. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, boy, I wish I could be involved in it. I just wish I knew more languages, but I don't. And I guess I could start. Now, be careful, Samati. Don't say something you can't follow up on. Very good. How <clears throat> how big a group? Is this going to be by video or is this going to be in person? In person. It's going to be in person. And... We have some subjects like the meditation uh, coffee, like the rejoice, uh, the dear suit. We are going to work with activities, some manual activities. And so we are working on that. How old are the kids? Uh, five to 12. Five to 12. Um, I have a, a student here in, in Tucson that has a program for kids that's mm -hmm. very... Um, comprehensive would you like to me to put you in contact with her yeah that will be great do you have do you know already eliana no i don't okay um let me see i need to how can i do this without turning everything off um would you send me your email address yes i probably have it but send it to me and okay, i will, I will, I will make contact with you because uh, i thank think you and Good, good. Well, I rejoice in your working with children. That's going to be what a just think to what it would have been like if you at that age you had been introduced to the Dharma. Think of that extra 20 years of practice. So mm -hmm. very good. I'm I'm really happy. That's that's just that's stupendous. Okay, Anna, what do you have to rejoice? Hello, Venerable Sumati. Hello, everyone. Uh, about my rejoicing, um, uh, last week uh, I was trying to help my mom and my dog. Uh, my dog is ill and uh, maybe um, she's uh, going to die, uh, maybe soon. I don't know. She... My dog is pretty old, more than 10 years. 
and uh, she has a specific uh, illness uh, i don't know how it will be in english epilepsy maybe epilepsy yes yeah with uh, nervous system problems with nervous system and i try to help uh, to take care my mom to take care about uh, our dog um i hope uh, we will um, do all best for her and her days will be full of love and compassion and careless careless yes uh, and um, i'm so sorry i know how yeah i know how difficult that is i i had our dog that was a wonderful Megan, the, the wonder dog, and she had a stroke and we had to put her down because she was in pain. And that was, that's one of the hardest things I had to do in my life. I was crying, my wife was crying, the vet was crying, but it was the best for her. So be strong, know that your dog knows you, you loved her. And uh, think of all the joy you had for the years that you had her. And and realize she's going to be reincarnated as a human because of all the love you gave her. So be strong. Okay, Avilda, I need to ask you, am I pronouncing your name right? Is it Avilda or Awilda? Awilda. Awilda. Okay, I'm sorry for the time. But I, li I like Avilda. <laughs> That's pretty. Okay. Okay. What, are, what do you have to rejoice about? Hello, everybody. Hello, uh, Venerable Sumati. Thank you. Uh, I uh, appreciate this class and the teachings. Um, uh, first of all, I rejoice that I made it. <laughs> I was out shopping this morning and I just made it back just in time to get into the class. So I rejoice a prompt to timing for me uh, not to skip the class. And I re I've been thinking about it uh, the past few days what I have been rejoicing and what I would rejoice so many things. And I actually came up with the thought that I, I, I rejoice that the negative karmas that show up in my life show up now, the confusions that show up now and misunderstandings show up now, show up now when I'm studying uh, ACI six, <laughs> because I feel I've been, I'll, I'm being given the opportunity in my karmic cause and effect to intellectually understand things and to work on planting seeds of not planting negative seeds, planting uh, good seeds of, of compassion and love and giving. Um, I, I rejoice that I, I have a couple of friends and people here that I uh, are always asking me about the Dharma, are always asking me about what what I believe in this and that, and I'm grateful that I'm able to uh, practice that dharma in that way. Because when I when I'm asked and when I give them what I know, it gives me a chance to practice the dharma even more. So it really solidifies the dharma within me. So I I rejoice for a lot and good. the good the good the bad and the ugly <laughs> and the great. Oh, very good. That's um. <clears throat> The opportunity to teach appears often, and the opportunity to learn. Keep in, I keep trying very hard to keep in mind that you are all my teachers. In one way or another, you are all my teachers. And if I can remember that and learn from each one of you, that's even more powerful for me. So, very good. Okay, Mike, what's up with you? Oh, thank you for your internet connection. Yes, thank you very much. Um, today I rejoice that um, I had a uh, I met with a couple of people this morning um, to go over some like classwork, and uh, one of them was having a problem. Um, and it was just like it was just cool to watch a, a practicing Buddhist going through a difficult like really really difficult situation in their life and to just be discussing it in terms like 
they weren't saying like, oh, like, why is this happening to me? And this person did this to me and they, you know, what all of these things are happening to me. You know, it was just really um, cool to watch someone else um, just use wisdom in such a um, just in such a matter of fact way. Like it was. It totally took all of the pain and all of the um, like just unnecessary suffering out of the situation. And they were just looking at it from like, OK, like, how does that like, what do I do from here? You know what I mean? Like, OK, I have all of this information that I'm presented with. And now how do I organize that information um, into something else? And it was just really cool to watch. Um, someone do that in a really skilled way that I don't know if I would be able to look at things um, so uh, objectively if I were in that situation. Um, so I just want to celebrate um, other people's successes and just this. It's great. Thank you. Well, I've, I've observed you, Mike, in many situations as we've discussed things and you do have, have the ability to look at the uh, the problem objectively. So don't kid yourself. You have that ability and you do it. And we, I think we're all doing it to some extent, but it's just beautiful that you had the opportunity to see someone else do it. Because when we say we do it, it's like, yeah, well, that's what I'm learning. But when somebody else is doing it, to, for me, that... Uh, that just strengthens my resolve to learn as much as I can about this path and practice as best I can. So, excellent, excellent. Alexander, what do you have to rejoice in? Hopefully Maximilian's feeling much better. He is doing much better, thank you. Hello, we never smart, hello, all together. He's, he's really fine, so, but he will come later. I will show him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, so Con and I attended a live ACI 11 event in Vienna this weekend. Oh, wow. and Yeah, the, the first five cl classes uh, live is, yeah, the whole Germans, uh, Austrian and German song. Um, yeah, and there was an auction for Sarah May for the monastery of Geshe Magli. Mm -hmm. Geshe. And I rejoiced that about about a beautiful handmade large tanker, 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 mm -hmm. with Gesh Michael as a Buddha uh, picture and oh. for Con. And I did hear two good things at the same time. On the one hand, I supported Sarah May. Uh, and on the other hand, I was fulfilling a wish for Con. Con <laughs> so I dedicate this to all sentient beings that on the one hand, they receive support when they need it, and on the other hand, that their wishes come true. Very good. Very good. Well, I'm glad you had a chance. Who was the teacher? In, uh... um, three different teachers. Eva Barzo, um, mm -hmm. Markus Tsar, mm -hmm. he is a musician in Austria, and also uh, Christ Christina Knopf. She... She's a student of Peter Merton, for example. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't know any of those people. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. But it's good, good for you. I'm glad you had a chance to do that. Thank you. Yeah, it's wonderful karma ripening. Now you've gotten a teaching, now you have to start teaching. Hmm. Yeah. So I'll start with your children <laughs> and then start with that most high powerful karmic object, your lovely wife. And then reach out from there. So Cornelia, speaking of a lovely wife, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Venerable Sumati. Today I had the opportunity to bath the children. It was a bubble bath, so I have planted fun and joy, which I would dedicate to you and all sentient beings. Wow. Cool. Thank you. We we that are speaking on behalf of all sentient beings, we thank you. Okay, who's last on my list here? Um, Evgeny. 
Hello, everyone. Сегодня не будет душесчипательной so, uh, Today there will be no uh, uh, spirit touching, uh, soul touching story. I have a friend, uh, she is living in Germany. She is in marriage for seven years and she has some problem. They can't have children, not by medicinal uh, indicators, but by some life circumstances. And I wanted to help her very strongly. But I uh, didn't manage to talk with her about it. Uh, she doesn't understand a seed system, but she accepts a, a word of motivation with which you can help other people. And I uh, didn't have time to discuss with her about it. And for one and a half month, I couldn't manage with her to discuss about it. But during this uh, period, I get to know that uh, there are some people who are uh, um, getting ready to uh, become a father and i'm uh, <laughs> constantly meeting pregnant women and i'm even afraid to go uh, uh, outdoors because i'm afraid that uh, some other people will become pregnant or about to have a children okay i'm not sure i quite understand mm -hmm. I... explain that again to me i, I lost this Суть в том, что у меня есть намерение. An idea is that I have an intention to help her, but I didn't manage uh, to uh, tell her a plan how to help her. But uh, already I'm uh, seeing results that there are many people who are waiting for a child to be born or people who are pregnant, women who are pregnant. So I'm seeing these results around me. Oh. Wow. Well, wow, that's very interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> Thank you for trying to help. It's the little things, as I keep saying, it's the little things that count. Okay. Um, I think Tatiana, that's our, our last rejoice, and then me. Mm. Tatiana? Good evening, dear Lama Sumati. Good evening, my friends. I have lots of rejoicing. Uh, I will share two. The first one, my mom became to feel better. Last Monday, uh, we had a, uh, we had a, a pity event. Uh, she fall down and uh, i was happy that many people supported me and helped me now she is recovering i hope that tomorrow doctors will tell something positive more positive to us and another rejoicing my partner my man uh, today i shared with him information about uh, renunciation he asked uh, some they uh, question that we are all living here, but what for we are living? And before I couldn't tell him uh, an essence of renunciation, but today he uh, uh, was open for that and I am uh, very happy about it. And I hope that our spiritual partnership partnership uh, will be enhanced and stronger and also uh, and he will be also in diamond wisdom i have such a dream excellent excellent well i think it's time to say hi to maximilian hi maximilian <laughs> i'm glad you're feeling better don't go around swallowing metal, pieces of metal. Okay. Okay, my rejoicing. Well, let me see. <clears throat> no, I donated, I, there's a museum in North Dakota that, uh, I donated my 250 gig um, database to Minuteman database, 
And I got the most wonderful letter from the director of the museum, profusely thanking me for everything I've done for the, the Minuteman program and the, the various museums. Um, so I just, as I told him, I put it on my wall of thank you letters that I keep. So whenever I get a little bit sad, I just read one of those letters and it makes me realize I've had an impact on a lot of people's lives. Then yesterday, I was looking for a specific photograph and it doesn't, there's only two of them on the internet and they're both low resolution and I needed it for my, the article I'm writing. So I contacted a museum that has a, an example of what I want a photograph of, but it's got a plexiglass cover and it's not really easy to get a photograph of. So I sent a couple of emails and phone calls and much to my surprise, most of the people I contacted are very interested in helping me because they recognize that I'm the author of this, the book on the Minuteman program. So it's, it's nice that they put A and B together because they know I'm serious. I'm not just somebody who wants a photograph. I have a serious background for, and reason for the photograph. So I'm glad the, the karma ripening for me to help others is ripening now in an instance that I need something. And uh, I just rejoice that it works. All this rejoicing works. It's a very important to keep that in mind. Okay. Now, now I don't know. I caught you. I, I think has probably heard this story. So don't roll your eyes when I get started on it. Um, have I told any of you about the first class we took from Geshe and Michael? Okay, so we hear about this somebody, an American Geshe, who we don't know anything about, coming to Tucson to teach something about called the diamond cutter. <clears throat> so realizing that we'll be able to get a class in English, um, we go to the class and he's teaching the diamond cutter sutra, course six. And if you think it's difficult for you to teach, to listen to course six, we had no introduction to Buddhism at this point, well, very little. And so we're listening to class six, the course six, and trying to keep track of, yes, things are real, no, they aren't. And I just remember back to that, um, to that happening and how it was a gift from Geshe Michael, the way he taught, that it got us interested in, in the ACI courses. So if you think uh, if you think trying to understand it now is difficult, um, welcome to the world. That was, uh, I still have very clear memories of that. Hmm. Okay. Actually, that's where I I left my business card with um, the people that were attending, had come with him. And that's when I, a week later, I got a phone call to see if I was serious about helping setting up their retreat. And that's how I got involved with the Diamond Mountain and Geshe Michael. It was, uh, well, it's karma ripening. Okay. So let's get to class. <clears throat> the Chi Chedrock, I, I said, did you send everybody that page, Svetlana? Okay. Um, it, it, yes, I, I shared uh, the file in the chat. Okay. So my computer, there it is. Okay. Well, let's see how we're doing on time. Well, I can do it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen.
and I'm going to Okay, <clears throat> so you can all see my screen, right? Uh, yes? Okay. So we have path of accumulation, which is known as Soklam in Tibetan, and it's generating renunciation, where you leave the home life and worldly life. <clears throat> now, back in the day, that meant going to the monastery or nunnery. But I I say now, <clears throat> you don't have to give up your family or your job. You have to start approaching your, your existence with uh, wisdom and generating renunciation by understanding that you have responsibilities. And one of the main responsibilities is learning the Dharma and making the changes necessary in your life. So leaving the home life, leaving the worldly life, means studying the Dharma and making the changes such that you've, uh, you're putting your understanding of the Dharma and your practice of the Dharma first. Then there's path of preparation or jorlam. And this is where you gain the intellectual understanding of emptiness and especially Chi Chedrock, which we'll discuss in just a minute. Then you have the path of seeing, the direct perception of emptiness, path of habituation, gomlam, applying what you saw to everyday life, and then the path of no more learning, miloblam. If you have bodhicitta in your heart at this level, you will reach total Buddhahead. So we briefly talked about Chi Chedra, quality and characteristics. We're going to talk about this much more in Course 13. So there are four ways of looking at mental images, and it's very important in Course 13. It's very important that we try hard to understand these concepts, and they're difficult, and they're difficult to teach, but I'm, I'll try my best. So there are four ways of looking at mental images. There's a sokchi, which it's a collection of its parts. The body's a collection of arms and legs. Um, that's not all that important. Rikchi, quality. What is characteristic, characteristic of, of a car? The chedra characteristic is Chevrolet. A Chevrolet is a car, but not all cars are Chevrolets. So I need to, you need to, it's, this is pretty obscure now, but we'll get further into it later. Number three and more, four are specific ways of seeing existing things. A Dunchi is a mental image of something you've seen personally. A Drachi is mentally creating something you've not seen. So the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, I've never seen it, but I have mental images of what I think it would look like. So the relationship of these four ways of looking at mental images is something we're going to investigate much more thoroughly um, later. Okay, so I'll stop. Whoops, stop sharing. So now we're moving on to the enemy destroyer, foe destroyer, or what was called an arhat. Once mental afflictions are destroyed, you reach nirvana. If you have bodhicitta in your heart, you're on your way to Buddhahood. But you still have several obstacles to omniscient to destroy. And those we'll get to later in this course. In the sutra now, Lord Buddha asks the Buddha, what do you think, Sabuti? Is an arhat an arhat? And Sabuti answers, if an arhat thinks to himself, I am an arhat, then he is not an arhat. For example, if someone reached the eighth bodhisattva bhumi and thought, I have reached the eighth bodhisattva bhumi, then Lord Buddha would not come to them to make the final prediction. 
So what are we talking about here? The first level is reached on the path when the path of seeing is reached with bodhicitta in your mind, heart and mind, especially seeing emptiness, basically seeing emptiness directly with bodhicitta in your heart. At the eighth bodhisattva bhumi, you've reached the point where your perceptions are no longer polluted by ignorance, but you still have subtle seeds for ignorance due to eons of having perceived things the wrong way but you no longer see, in quote, things as self-existent. How is stopping things as self-existent? How does it stop your mental afflictions? Lord Buddha makes it even more obtuse. He makes a statement about things that will never grow, the short name for the eighth bodhisattva level. This refers to two things, things that will never grow. Emptiness. The emptiness of something does not start tiny and grow into a whole thing. An object's emptiness is complete the instant that the object exists, and the emptiness is gone the, the instant the object is destroyed, but it's never partial. So my best analogy to this is if you've ever seen the Star Trek movies, when they get in the transporter, they... They start to dazzle and change into that multicolor light, and then they disappear. So that would be like emptiness being partial. But emptiness isn't partial. Emptiness is there or it's not there. It's not 10% emptiness, not 20% emptiness. Something's emptiness is either there or it's gone when the object's gone. The other thing that will never grow are the subtle seeds of ignorance in the mind of an eighth level bodhisattva. So now we talk about um, psychic winds, lung tempa. Lung tempa translates into something that's karmically active. This can refer to when the Buddha declared something specifically as karmically active, such as virtue or shame. So what is shame? Anybody give me a definition of what shame is in Buddhism? Shame is the mindset of preventing yourself from doing a wrong deed only out of your own self-consideration. No one can see you but you don't do something um, because you know it's wrong, not regardless of whether anybody can see you or not. This is a virtue, a karmically active thing, a positive thing. Anger is karmic, karmically active and negative. So we talk about something that's neutral, karmically neutral. And I forgot about this. Sleep is karmically neutral. I think that's interesting. So, to Lord Buddha ran up against the... When, when you ask a teacher a question, when you ask me a question, I try very hard to write it down and research it as best I can and get back to you. There were 10 questions that Lord Buddha ran up against that he refused to answer. And they were, is the word world eternal, number one, or is the world not eternal? I'll, I'll send you this list. Uh, let, me, let me not go through them now. I will send you the list. Let me write that down. Ten questions. So Lord Buddha refused to answer these because, whoops, where did my notes go? Well, that's weird. There we go. 
Lord Buddha refused to specifically answer questions or something for non-Buddhists because he didn't want to answer in a way that would not be taken as self-existent. So he refused to answer these questions because the capacity of the student who asked for him wouldn't have the ability to understand his answer. So rather than confuse the student, he refused to answer. So back to the Lung Tempa. The day the Lord Buddha appears to you and says, now, when you get to the eighth Bodhisattva Bhumi, um, and when you see emptiness directly, uh, there's a point in which Lord Buddha will appear to you and say, okay, you will be a Buddha on such and such a day. Your name will be such and such. You will appear on this planet and you will do these things. Congratulations. You already know it's going to happen at some point due to your experience in the direct perception of emptiness. This happens at the eighth Bodhisattva Bhumi level where you're aware of the illusory nature of all things. You realize it's wrong to proclaim or announce your achievement at the first Bodhisattva level, but you must learn to teach by example. So Lord Buddha asks, if someone reached the eighth Bodhisattva Bhumi and thought it was to themselves, I have reached the eighth Bodhisattva level, then the Buddha would not come to them and make the final prediction. Meaning that the thinker say, I have become an arhat, means they're still grasping that to the self-existence, which means they have not reached arhatship. So a final prediction cannot be made. So what does this really mean? Doesn't the Buddha think to himself, think about himself as a Buddha? In the Dhammakara Sutra, Lord Buddha made a declaration that, that it is a non-virtue to steal the Buddha's begging bowl. So clearly he's still thinking of his own about the begging bowl. So he must think of himself as a Buddha who has a begging bowl. But it's important to realize this. Here he is thinking in the context of concern for the thief and not for the loss of his begging bowl. So let me repeat that. Lord Buddha makes a de declaration that it's a non-virtue to steal the Buddha's begging bowl. So clearly he thinks that he has a begging bowl. So he must think of himself as a Buddha who has a begging bowl. But here he is thinking in the context of a concern for the thief, not for the loss of his begging bowl. Of course, an arhat thinks of himself as an arhat, but not in an ultimate sense, meaning not independent of their projections. So, they know there's nothing independent of their projection, mental picture of something you've actually seen. So now Lord Buddha says, Lord Buddha says to Subhuti, does the Buddha who is making the perfection, the prediction think, I am the Buddha making the prediction? Does that mean that, that the Buddha, meaning that that Buddha exists? Subhuti's answer is of course, no. The person making the prediction does not exist, meaning does not exist independent of their projections. Meaning independent of the projection of the person getting the prediction or independent of the projections of the person giving the prediction. A person getting the prediction, does the person getting the position, the prediction exist? No, not, it's important to, to Understand this. No, not independent of their own projections forced by their karma. So does a person getting the prediction exist? No, if they think they're independent of their karma. But yes, if they understand how karma works.
So this is where the emptiness of the three spheres comes in. This is the empty of what we talked about for you to think about this week. And I'd like you to, I'd like you to come up this week on, on uh, Thursday. I'd like you to come up with specific three spheres examples. So what were the three spheres in the situation and how did you respond? As we do any good deeds, if we recall the three aspects of the deed and the lack of our self nature to these three aspects, aspects, this makes the deed much more powerful as it is a seed done with wisdom. So I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that you see your act, actions with as, as best you can with the wisdom, the concept of wisdom that you know. It's my karma, but should not be anywhere in your, your thought process. It's my karma, so. It's my karma because of my past. This is happening because of my karma from past misdeeds or past good deeds. So what two things bring you to reaching the eighth bodhisattva bhumi? You have eliminated all mental afflictions, due to the individual analysis as a result of the direct perception of emptiness. So how does direct perception of emptiness result in firmly stopping all mental afflictions? What really happens on the path of habituation? How do you really become an arhat? So here's the story of the king of Kalinka. Lord Buddha was in a former life was a yogi meditating in the forest, minding his own business, when the Queen of Kalinka rode up on her horse, apparently unscorted, and asked for a teaching. So as Geshe Michael puts it, they had a picnic. He proceeded to start teaching the subject, whatever subject, it's not in the in the uh, commentary. So he started to teach a, a subject, Dharma subject, when the king rides up along with his, uh, his escort out for a hunt. The king immediately gets the wrong impression and thinks uh, Lord Buddha has been messing around with his queen. Apparently he's a jealous man because they were just sitting there talking to each other, not embraced or whatever. He immediately gets the wrong impression and the, uh, they then tie the yogi down and begin to cut off his fingers, toes, and then move to his arms and legs. Lord Buddha described that he didn't, did not have any anger at that moment. Did he have pain? Does having a direct perception of emptiness end all pain? Lord Buddha said he had no conception of his own self-nature. He knew everything that was happening due to the ripening of karma from past deed. So the worst thing he could do would have been respond by yelling out in pain or chastising the, the king. He did not have the perception of me or mine, lifetime of me, mind stream of me. He did have these projections. He saw him getting his fingers cut off. But he had had this, all these things happening for him his entire life, and he knew that he would be reborn. He did not see anything happen to him as existing independent of his projections. So what was he doing when all this was going on? He was keeping his mind on the emptiness of the three spheres, the dependent origination aspect. He was thinking, this is my dunchi, my projection, which is valid. There is blood and pain, and I am being cut. But he understood that none of this was happening independent of the ripening of karma from his own past deeds. So he couldn't get mad at the king. He could only get mad at one person, himself.
closely paired to his not feeling pain or uh, to his not getting angry, he knew the last thing he would want to do was react with anger or hurt the king or his men in many ways, in any ways. So while in this case he didn't take any action, it might be appropriate in another situation to prevent the other person from creating a horrible negative karma. So that's the dilemma we have. Is my karma ripening? So if I want to have good things happen in my life, I have to focus on the good thing. But does that make it okay for me to ignore the bad thing? Oh, obviously not. Obviously not. When something bad happens, you have to realize the three spheres, where it came from, how it's connected, and what are you going to do about it? This does not mean you should avoid, not act to avoid negative situations, but your action must be motivated by any of the six major bad thoughts. It must not be motivated by these six poisons. Ignorant desire, ignorant aversion, ignorance itself, pride, jealousy, and wrong view. Your actions, all your actions must be motivated by compassion to protect the other person. One of the homework questions is to, is to describe the emptiness of an arhat's mind. Its emptiness is its ultimate nature, and they're aware of the deceptive nature, its dependent origination, which is that it could exist as projection. No state of mind could ever disturb its peacefulness due to the planting of virtuous karmic seeds. The essence of the path of habituation, I repeat, where you take your experience of the first direct perception of emptiness and the direct perception of origin, dependent origination to change your natural reactions to life. So, like the story of I caught myself when I was taking that rock, walk with my wife and she was so far ahead of me. My first reaction was, this is wrong, this isn't fair, she's being rude. That was my very first reaction. Quickly, quickly followed by, this is my karma ripening. Now, what I'm trying to do, and I'm not having as much success as I'd like, but it doesn't mean I'm giving up. I want to catch myself before I complete the thought. It's not fair. I want to catch myself to say, my wife's walking in front of me. In the past, I did a similar thing, or I just was oblivious to other person's needs, and that's how it's ripening. It doesn't have to be that way, because I'm in control. So instead of my thinking, oh, that's rude of her, I immediately think, I set this situation up a long time ago, or maybe a month ago. And it's my karma ripening to see this, uh, ignoring my needs. So the surest way to continue that kind of karma, karma to keep ripening is to go up and say, why didn't you wait for me? That was really rude. The surest way for that to not happen again is for me to go up to her and say, sorry I took so long. Uh, did you see what you wanted to see at the end of the street? I think it's really important, really important to keep that in mind all the time. It's your karma ripening. There's no one else to blame. So you need to do the three spheres at the least and understand how it's going to affect your life. 
you want to be burning off bad karma. And the only way to do it is to understand the three spheres. So let's go over the three spheres one more time. I like to use the example of my being relieved of my duties at the university. So I get an email that says I need to meet with my boss at 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. So I don't recall why I thought it, but I was pretty sure I was going to get fired. I think the business manager had told me that the money was tight. So I go into the meeting and we sit down and my boss immediately launches into losing some samples, plant samples. And I will admit, at the very beginning of the question, I thought, well, I'm going to tell her that her star researcher, uh, who was responsible for the problem, it was his mistake, not mine. I, I, I thought that, but I didn't, didn't do it because I knew that was wrong. It was wrong thinking it was their stuff existing. It was right knowing it came from my mind. So instead of trying to explain it away, I simply accepted, yes, I, I misplaced the samples. Can I explain why? And she said yes. And so instead of saying, I don't remember the researcher's name, did this, 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 and this. I said, the sample was underneath in, in one of the fume hoods. And I found it and put it back where it was supposed to be. But I didn't tell her who or what or where, because that wasn't important. What was important was it was my projections happening. So in order to project myself in the future, I made it as generic as possible. And, and use the three spheres to understand that since it was coming from me, I could have it not happen again in the future. And that's the secret of the three spheres for me. So, that's pretty much what we have. what we have for class today. These are short classes. They're complex classes. Um, but I think, oh, I know what we need to do. Um, I was going to read the, heart, the uh, Diamond Cutter Sutra as an oral transmission. Are any of you interested in, in doing that? Okay. It takes about an hour and a half. Oh, it's slow going. I tell you what. Okay, let me look at my calendar. Let me see if I can use my phone. Okay. Class eight. Class nine. Okay. Kishi Michael's teaching. Class nine. Class ten is the twenty first. Class eleven is the twenty fourth. That's going over the, the questions. Um, I'm going to be in, hmm, I'll be in Spain. When can we do this? Yo. Oh. Okay, on the 24th, on my calendar, Svetlana, on the 24th is the review class. Right? Okay.
um, I don't have anything going on after the review class. So for those of you that want to stay up if it's late or want to hear the oral transmission, let's do it after class on the 24th. That's a Thursday. And if you can if you can work it in, um, I, I really it's very powerful uh, to get this transmission, not not from me. Uh, that's inconsequential. It's hearing the, the Diamond Cutter Sutra is a very important thing. So, um, okay, we will do that. Now, Svetlana, will that be a problem with the uh, Zoom to go extra hours? No? Okay, good, good. I have a question. Sure. So is, that, is that our our class? We have a review on the 24th. The, I thought the class ended on the, on the 14th. No, because uh, Geshe Michael's teaching... Um, He's teaching medicine Buddha, so I don't teach when my teacher's teaching. Ah, yeah, so right. Me, so, uh, yeah. We review the schedule. So we have class eight on Thursday, class nine next Monday. Then we don't have class until the. Um, well, now I'm confusing myself. Oh, there. So we don't have class until the 21st. And that's class 10. Then on the 24th, we have class 11. Oh, okay. And then we'll have the, uh, the Diamond Cutter Sutra oral transmission uh, that day as well. Okay? Okay. I yes. Think, I think you'll enjoy that. Okay. And I'm oh. going to be in the pre-retreat, so I'm not sure I'll be able to make class seven. Okay. Well, we'll give it a Maybe. try. Maybe. We'll try. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's dedicate. May the source of benefit and goodness, the Dharma, spread and expand. May the beings upholding the Dharma have excellent health. May the source of happiness and well-being for all embodied beings, the Dharma taught by the Buddhas, always increase. Through this merit, may I soon attain the enlightened state of Guru Buddha, so that I may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious Bodhi mind not yet born arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. Thank you for the opportunity to teach you this material. It's always a pleasure and I appreciate you taking the time to come to class and thank you for being my teachers as well. I don't think I give my students anywhere near the credit that they deserve for being teachers for me. So thank you. Thank you. And Lydia, you're going to Japan in December. Wow. That's, that is amazing. Well, I'm so happy for you. Oh, I know what you need to do. I was in Kyoto when I was, how old was I? I was 15. <coughs> so there's a place called the Kyoto Tower. It's, this, it's like an Eiffel Tower kind of thing. It's a tall, it's where they broadcast television signals. You get a chance, go up the Kyoto Tower. And when you get to the top, try and imagine a 15-year-old me looking out over the city. One thing that was that was fun for me, I'm are you how tall are you? How, how tall are you? Um, medium. <laughs> One meter uh, 70. One meter. Oh, you're more than one meter. How many centimeters? <laughs> well, 
The reason I ask is my brother and I are quite tall. I'm six foot three. So what's that? I guess that's, is that two meters? Almost. Well, I'm a little bit less than two meters tall. And so when we were in Japan, uh, the Japanese would look at us and laugh. They'd start to giggle because we were so tall. This is back in 1968. So this is back before time began. And I just remember thinking, wondering what they were laughing at. And we finally realized it's because we were so tall. But anyway. Okay. Have a good couple of days. We'll see you on Thursday. And don't forget, I would like you to have specific examples, uh, a specific example of the three spheres situation. So I think it's really important to start thinking about that all the time. So that's your assignment. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you very much. Bye. Please stay. Thank you so much. Please stay. Please teach us. And I owe you the 10 questions. I'll get that list together. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much for teaching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.